Hi everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. So today I'm going to show you a unique thing that you can do in financial reporting, which I feel adds a lot of value uh, to what you might be showcasing. You, you might want to showcase uh, P&L data or cash flow data or balance sheet data, but what you can do in Power BI is you can actually make dynamic dynamic numbers within say uh, a matrix or within a table or, or within something that looks like a pivot pivot table but you can just make it so much better by utilizing this technique now what I'm talking about is inside of this table you'll see here that uh, this is a matrix which is breaking down all our um, line items in the profit and loss statement we're looking at revenue all the revenue line items all the expenses and then that, that gets broken down a little bit more but what I want to do is I want to uh, showcase actuals I want to showcase my budgets and I want to showcase well how we're we performing versus our last year results as well and you, once you understand how to utilize this team you'll be able to think of hundred, maybe tens maybe hundred other ways that you could actually utilize it to create dynamic figures because you might want to compare against something else you might want to compare against last quarter last month something like that so essentially what we can do with the setup in this particular report that has been um, created this this report by the way was actually created um, was a member only uh, enterprise dna member only session where it was a 90 minute session ran through uh, how to build this from from absolute scratch now uh, the the one of the one of the the big things that I went over was was this particular um, thing that I'm breaking out uh, here in this in this tutorial. But what if we look at this line down here? You'll see here that this is percentage difference. Now it doesn't actually say if it's percentage difference versus budget versus last year because it's a dynamic number. So we're calculating actuals, but I'm also showcasing the difference in this case between budget. But then if I flip to last year it also actually shows me the difference to last year dynamically. And that's why it's such a powerful technique in my view. It's a dynamic measure that showcases lots of different insights within this one report page. So we don't have to lay everything out one by one like you probably would in Excel. You can actually feed a lot of information dynamically into these tables within Power BI just by utilizing some, uh, some techniques in the model and also some uh, DAX formula. Now, how do we do it? That's what I want to show you. Now, first of all, I'm just going to walk you through how I did it. I'm not going to um, replicate it or anything because I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on that. But basically, uh, we first of all need to create a table which we can place into this slicer here. So we need to be able to um, have a dimension that uh, lists versus budget and versus last year. And so how did I, how I did that was I created this really simple table, very, very simple. And this is our comparison metric. And then I've just put a small index next to it. Now once we do that, we need to create a measure which understands what selection we have made. right? And so we could be selected on versus last year, but I need to, uh, uh, within a measure, list that. I want to actually show that uh, or calculate, okay, well, what are we selected on? And that's what this uh, selected metric formula does. And it's pretty simple. And it's saying, well, you, we use selected value, give me the selection because results, comparison, compare, compare metric, that's that particular uh, column that we just created in that table. If nothing is selected, I've just defaulted it to, vers to versus budget, so that's what this is doing here. But right now, this would be evaluating to versus last year because that's what we selected. If I selected that, this formula would be evaluating to versus budget. Now, why do we need to do this? Because in the second part of this technique, we need to use the selection. So we need to understand what is selected, and then based on that, we're going to go and retrieve another measure that we have already calculated to then create this comparison, right? Now, we've created actuals. I've also, within this, uh, within the uh, model, right, I've created versus budgets, and I've also created the calculations versus last year. So I'm not going to go through how I created those because they could differ based on what data sets you have, right? Um, and, and I have actually showcased how you calculate time intelligence calculations in other tutorials, so certainly check those out. What I do want to show you here is how you create this dynamic measure. So when you select this uh, slicer, uh, or you make a selection within the slicer, it will actually change what's actually happening in behind the scenes. Now, if we jump into this formula, this is what does it, right? This is what does it. 
Now, switch true. Now, uh, if you haven't come across switch before, certainly search for a video on switch true um, because I, I do actually run through it in quite detail there. But basically, switch is like a nested if statement, right? So what we're doing here is we're going to evaluate through logic and we're going to say, well, if versus budget is selected, or if versus last year is selected, go and retrieve a particular uh, particular measure. If versus budget is selected, go and retrieve another measure. If nothing is selected, then go and retrieve this particular measure. So it's always going to be, be default into budget if nothing is selected. So once we've done that, well then we can then integrate it. We can then integrate it into our percentage diff calculation, right? Because we are then retrieving the comparison measure dynamically based on the selection we're making. And so if I just come to the final calculation here, you'll see that uh, we have, I've redone it basically, and instead of uh, instead of calculating, um, uh, instead of utilizing the individual uh, actual budgets of last year, I've actually gone straight into a measure. We're branching out from other measures uh, and integrating it into the same uh, pattern or same logic inside of Switch. And so all it's doing is it's saying, well, if uh, versus budget is selected, so if selected magic is versus budget, then go and retrieve the percentage diff to budget. Now I'll just show you what this formula is, just to make sure it's not difficult. All it is, is it's, it is doing that, in behind the scenes, it's doing that calculation for us, where it's saying, okay, actuals minus budgets divided by budgets is going to give you the percentage difference, right? Or the percentage um, uh, appreciation or depreciation versus, versus that comparison metric. And then you have it, that's it basically, that's it. Now hopefully after listening to how you actually do that, your mind is just expanded immeasurably in terms of how you get to utilize that setting because there's just so many ways you could utilize it, right? I mean, you could have way more comparison metrics in here um, you know, and dynamically switch through all of those. You could you could also dynamically actually have, say, the actual comparison number. You could have the actuals, you could have the budgets, you could have the last year dynamically changing as well. So, so many cool ways that you could actually utilize this one technique. But ultimately, you know, does it produce really good insight? I feel it does. And you can fit so much more into the one report page. You don't have to, you know, send these over four or five pages, have very, really huge matrix, uh, um, uh, matrices, matrix C's, I think, or tables or pivots. You know, you can um, really contract the way that you showcase this information and make it dynamic for the users to be able to flick through and see whatever they want. Okay, so I'm going to round things off there. There's lots of other things that um, ha have been built within this particular report. Um, now, if you do want to view it, um, it was a member-only session, and it is only available to Enterprise DNA members. If you if you head along to Enterprise DNA online, or head over to Enterprise DNA online, which is portal.enterprisedna.co, you'll see a huge amount of courses and resources there. In this particular uh, this particular um, session uh, is within the uh, scenario method workshops so um, you know these are, are really great member only sessions and um, are for those who, who who decide to upgrade and so the recordings are also available to to anyone who upgrades at any time and that includes the resource as well by the way okay so hopefully you got a lot out of this one um, there's a lot more um, your financial reporting uh, coming out soon uh, for members um, you know, it's heavily requested from, from many out there, so I plan to do a lot more of these member-only sessions around it. So certainly uh, think about uh, think about upgrading if you want to uh, learn about those and attend those. Um, but hopefully you can utilize some of these techniques if, if you're doing this type of work, if you're doing this type of analysis. There's, there's lots of applications for it. So um, I'm confident you, would, uh, you will find some use for it in some way, shape, or form. If you like the content, um, you really appreciate a like on the video. And, and also don't forget to subscribe. There's a lot of content every weekday from Enterprise. Prize DNA, so I really want to get that into your hands as soon as possible. All the best, talk to you soon.